This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by EA's Dead Space, Squarespace.com, and GoDaddy.com. Did you see this? I don't want to look at it. Look at it. I don't want to. No, look at it. Look at it. No. Look. It's nice. Hey, welcome to iFanboy, the comic book discussion show. My name is Connor. I'm here with... I'm Josh. And I'm Ron. And uh, Pat, over the over the years, we've, we'd like to take a look at a creator and kind of spotlight their work. Uh, we tend to talk a lot about writers, and and uh, and because there's just so much to talk about there. But we do want to talk about the artists. And we do it occasionally. Them, you know, to tip yeah. sale before. Yeah, exactly. And one um, one artist that we thought we'd take take a look at his work is Ben Templesmith. Ben Templesmith comes from the land down under. I'm sorry, I just said that. Ben. <laughs> Um, he's a, he's an Australian artist. Um, there are many other cliches we can throw yes. on the market. <laughs> but so he's from Australia. He has a knife. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Australia, and he um, he hasn't been working that terribly long. It's only been about six years in the comic book business. But in that six years, he's had a very big imprint. I think he's had there's, a big impact. There's nobody who does work that looks like his work. I mean, right. there's not there's not a ton of guys out there that you can say. You look at a page and you go, this is this guy and this is nobody else. He's and very original. He does his own, he does the whole page. Yeah. You know what I mean? He does his own color. He is the, he's the artist. He's not the penciler. He's not any of those things. And it doesn't look like anything else. And yeah. I think for that reason, uh, he's, he's notable. Yeah. He's also done a good job of putting himself with people that are popular writers. Like right. He's hooked up with Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis is a huge, passionate following. So therefore, he's thrust into the spotlight. And right. uh, he does great books that, that that not everybody reads but pe- people do read them love them and he's just there, there, there's something there's something visceral about his art that connects with people that that, that it's hard to forget <laughs> it's hard to get sometimes it's hard to shake some of those images from your brain um but like you said it also doesn't look like anyone else so it's easy to remember and that sort of thing he first kind of came on the scene in o2 and he um he uh, he did the art on hellspawn hellspawn um, uh, followed ashwood um who is i think if there's anybody who's close to yeah like if you want to go to that school of like bill sunkevich ashley wood Ben Temple Smith. Yeah. They're that's cool, of a yeah. family, but they yeah. none of them really look alike. Yeah. And it's important to note. And after uh, physically too, they don't look alike at all. <laughs> I don't know. Ben's what does tall. Ashley Wood look like? I don't know. I've never seen Ashley Wood. Exactly. I've never seen Bill He's um, cowboy boots and a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, come on. Um, <laughs> Hellspawn was like the Spawn book that was very eerie. Like, yeah. It was like the, the horror book, right? The, I, yeah. for, I was yeah. actually reading it when Brian Bendis was writing it a long time ago with Ashley Wood on, on the art, and yeah. it was so... Yeah, I bought it too. Yeah. It was very weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and and he fits perfectly for when I started, because I had stopped reading it when he came on it, yeah. I guess, but he fits perfectly because it was this ethereal, yeah. strange sort of thing, and it was a good place for, for Temple Smith to... His, yeah, his, his skills, thing. yeah. And and it was, you know, a good entry point into kind of showing off his style, which tends to get kind of pushed over in the genre of horror. Uh, he, but he also likes yeah. that. So yeah, he does, yeah. Cool so, so. And the reason why is because in 2002 also, it was 2000, 2003, yeah. he, he landed on a book that sort of blew up out of nowhere called 30 Days of Night, which from writer Steve Niles. You might have seen the, the recent movie of it, which came out last year, but that, that book... Was one of those slow build books where all of a sudden it just you heard about it everywhere. Yeah. It, was, it was. I mean, it was one of those things that was a massive high concept. Yeah, and, brilliantly high concept. Well, well and what was for people who don't know, if you haven't heard yeah. about it, vampires uh, in Barrow, Alaska, a town that has no daylight for thirty days. Well, that seems like just the place for vampires to be, doesn't it? And what what you get from you get from Temple Smith is you get creepy, creepy vampires. And I thought one of the best things about the film which we didn't really like, was that they really translated the look of his art to the screen, yeah, which is totally amazing. Did. The colors. Now, yes. N- now, what, what's interesting is that the concept of vampires, I mean, when you think of vampires, you think of Dracula, you think of Bela Lugosi, you think of this, this whole kind of thing. This... This reinvented the visual look of vampires. You know, where I think of George Hamilton. I was nice. trying to think of the name. I was like, I was but, like Richard Hamilton. No. But it, it was less about you know, like you, you, with vampires, you tend to think of the, the two fangs yeah. that sort of thing. But Ben Templesmith did with Eastern his vampires. Europe-ish. Yeah, with, with his vampires, they're hip. They dress nicely. They're thin. Um, but then also, when it so comes I'm to the Eastern European people in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to the teeth, they would open their mouths, and it'd be this gaping maw of fangs and teeth. Unending fangs. Unending teeth that are sca- scare the bejesus out of you. Like jaws. And yeah, yeah. And it and it really kind of cha- t- 
took the idea of a vampire and just changed it. And it's such a easy thing to do and such a subtle thing to do, but he did it so uniquely. Well, the, you know? the, the vampire's always been the, the sexy monster, you know, yeah. seducing, you know, the whole concept of, there's the whole culture around it. People want to be vampires because it's the sexual yeah. thing. The, the HBO series True Blood is like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is like, vampires are fucking scary monsters. Yeah. And here they are, and then you should be terrified of them. Yeah. And honestly, I, well, I don't love the, the book for the story. I love the book for the art. Yeah. The, his art, this is the first time I said it. Oh wow! Who's this guy? Yeah, this is fantastic. Like nothing you've ever seen, and like Josh said, he does the entire page, and so he does you know the the layout and and the elements and the borders and all these things like that, and it's 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 an, each page is an immersive experience that is just like uh, it's it's awesome. There's a thing that he does, and it, it comes out in more in his later work, and I think that as you look through the, you'll see the art, and the, that what he'll do is um, he'll, you'll have this ethereal background, yeah, like he, and then in the middle of it is really what is. Very simple, almost cartoonish sort of shape. It's very evocative, whatever it is. Um, and you'll see it as you go through this. But like all of that stuff that he puts in behind it, and all of that, and you'll see it in the original art, like that. There's not a lot there, and he yeah. adds so much to it after the fact. So the, dra the drawing, yeah. the figures, and everything. This, this is only a part of it. Right. Um, and the rest of it, it's just so evocative. It's as much about color as it is drawing. Yeah. Tone and yeah, all that exactly. stuff. It almost feels like most of his pages exist in fog. Yeah, yeah. Like there's always this like this it's, smokiness about his, yeah, about his yeah. character. Which is why, the, I mean, I think he chooses his projects wisely. And then he went from 30 Days a Night and he did some, there was some sequels, which I don't know if he drew or not. But He was involved in the project. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't yeah. love the, 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 the stories as much to continue on, but... He then he came up with Warren Ellis. He te yeah, and following working with Stephen Ellis, a good partnership. Warren Ellis for a book called Fell. Fell is so one bad. of one of the rare books that all three of us love. Um, that never comes out. That never comes out. It's it, um, it's published by Image Comics, and it, it kind of um, it got a lot of attention because it changed the uh, it the, format. Cha the format. It's a sixteen page story for buck ninety nine. Full color. How could you? Turn that down. I mean, a dollar ninety nine. And what was amazing was that I don't know if it was Ellis's script or Temple Smith's art or the combination of the two, but you didn't get shorted in those sixteen pages. Oh. With Fell, each story they're kind of one and done, telling the story of um, of a, a detective, detective Richard Fell in Snowtown, who is just which is uh, which makes Gotham City look like Palace Playland. Yeah. More snow. And <laughs> and each snow. and each issue just feels complete and totally rich and full. And it's interesting because Fell. It's not a horror book. It's a crime book, mm -hmm. um, and so it's the, horrific. It's, but it's horrific, yeah. and he brings a lot of. But Temple Smith brought a lot of the tones that he worked on in Thirty Days a Night to Fell, where you set the scene and you get that smoky kind of feeling. You, you know, night is different than day, and and it's really interesting. I remember there was that one issue with when Fell was at the door. And the guys on the other side, and, and they and had the visual representation of Fell guessing where the guy was, yeah. and and it just I can't imagine Fell without Ben Temple Smith on it. Well, it's so. funny because I, I bought Thirty Days a Night, and then I you know a couple years go by, and as much as I love the art, I didn't really see him much. And then mm. Fell, I'm like, oh yeah, this guy. Yeah. And one of the things that's great about Fell is, even though his drawings are cartoonish, which are then changed by the painting, he does great faces in Fell. Mm -hmm. Richard Fell, he he's a unique looking character. He did, and it's all about. Since there's not a lot of monsters and there's not a lot of action, it's all just people. Expressions. It's all expressions. It's all the, all the emo. I mean, that's such an emotional and all, book. And it's, it's, it's a gut punch book. And, that's yeah. all in the faces. He's got, and we'll get into this after the break. But he gets into a lot of cinematic timing stuff when yeah. you look at his shots. And I think Fell's a book that, that does that really well. Yeah. But also some of his other work. And it, it's actually funny though because um, I, he was, I was at a signing that he was doing, and I went up for a sketch, and I, I, there was a big line and all the stuff. And I said, I, I said, can I get a Richard Fell? And he looked at me. He's like. You sure you don't want a vampire? And I was like, No, no, I like the, I don't, you know, I'm not really into vampires. I like Fell. And he's like, I can do a vampire. I like to do vampires. I'm like, I know. I'm like, just give me Fell. So he just gave me like a profile of Fell, and then it was done in like two seconds. And the next person, he did the vampire with the teeth and the blood, and like he's he's there in black and red, like using both hands, and like he was happy. Like he has a lot of fun doing his art. That's great. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah if so. he likes doing monsters, he should do monsters. He yeah. does them so well.
I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. Fell, one of my favorite books. You can get it in trade and hardcover. Um, it comes out erratically. Warren Ellis' schedule is one to, you know, not it's to a, understand. It's a, it's a project of love. Yes, it is, it is. Um, but um, but in addition to working with other writers... Uh, and, but, and apparently he doesn't like to draw it, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Warren, could you maybe put some vamp... That's the, that's the delay. I was like, all right, I got the script, and it's okay. Can we get a vampire in here? Sorry, I don't see any vampires. You just thought about teeth. <laughs> at all. Um... But so, uh, in addition to working with other writers, uh, Ben's got a, he's got a bunch of books that he's written himself. He's written and drawn completely yep. himself. He's got a very close um, relationship with IDW Publishing, so yeah. he has to put a lot of books out through them. Well, yeah. I mean, this 30 Days a Night made that, made that company. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, he's kind of got the Quentin Tarantino Miramax you know, <laughs> deal with IDW. Um, the first one, uh, his first one they mentioned is a book called uh, Wormwood, uh, Gentleman Corpse. Um, and this trade here I'm holding is the one Calamari Rising. Um, this one is interesting. It's, it's rough. I mean, I don't, I don't know what his... The only, I've only experienced his writing with this book and the next book we're going to talk about. So I don't know how much writing experience he has. But this is this book seemed to me like a very early writer stage book. Yeah. Beautiful. The art is beautiful. Beautiful yeah. to look at, but I, I found it difficult to get into the story. It's not really my thing. It's a very dimension topic monsters it's a very big yeah. kind of you know like uh, as far as i could tell wormwood the gentleman corpse is this is this corpse like guy who has yeah. been in existence for thousands and thousands of years he has a, and, a worm yeah he has a little worm. comes out of his eye and um creepy. and in this one uh the in in this trade paperback the the earth he's fat he's settled on earth that he likes it because it has beer and strippers and he's very kind of a crass dude you know crass kind of guy i think the gentleman corpse is a, mm -hmm. a little bit of irony <laughs> um, and uh, Earth gets attacked by these squid-like calamari, calama, as I like to say, aliens, and that he's fought before, and they, they take over dimensions, and he, you know, kind of puts a stake in there and saying, you're not taking this dimension, I like this dimension, and fights back. Right. And there's this, it's this neat little universe, he's got, um, the uh, Wormwood has a little, ro as a, not a little, but a, a robot that he's made, a little par uh, companion who fights as well, and, yeah. had, and that, I thought that was a great character. I like the robot suit he and, was in, that was kind of fun. I mean, yeah. this is all about, for me, this was all about the art, I mean, it was kind of like just one big butt battle it's, it's, story. It's all, yeah, it's almost, it's almost like, like a delivery method for the art. I was just going to say, it's almost like you drew all these things and then pieced together a story mm -hmm. around it's it. It's like the old um, Tom McFarlane style. Yeah, exactly. But that's it. But that's, and it's, we were talking about it before the show. To compare this and some even his more, more recent work to 30 Days a Night, you see the evolution of his skill mm -hmm. and his craft in, the, in this small amount of years. Are, you know, like 30 Days a Night is great. The art in these are just breathtaking. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, He's come a long way. He also has a mini going on, actually, currently right now, as you watch this, called yeah. "Welcome to Hoxford," and this one actually, I've, I've, all, I'm, I'm not obviously not done with it because it's not done yet, but yeah. it's, it's been, I really have been in like it. You're reading an issues, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really I interesting. Was, I actually, I actually really dug it too. It's a, it's a prison book. Yeah, I didn't. I think it's when I started reading. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and that's always fun when you read a book where you have no idea what it is. You start flipping. No the idea. Just yep. say, well, like, I'm gonna oh. try it. And, yeah. Um, yep. I, I like how the, the, the tagline is, uh, "Don't drop the soap." <laughs> but it's instead of it, but but instead of that is this this demon like thing. Which, so, which may be worse than prison rape. Right. Yeah. Which has come up on the show more than often yeah, than I would scary. think. Um, this this I think has more in common with Fell in terms of that. It straddles the line of yeah, both. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a prison where they it's privatized prison and they take the to people that the other prisons don't want. Right. And it's then Russian, you, right? What you find well, it's run by a Russian company, and then you yeah. find out that there's more going on in this prison than just a Russian company running it. There's actually uh, demons. Yeah. But one of the really things like that I, I noticed when I was reading in this, and I alluded to this before, is that his style is incredibly cinematic. In that you, you'll see this theme over and over again, and it's very subtle, because if you're not looking for it, you won't really notice it, but he'll have a wide shot of a character, yeah. and some things will happen, and then by the time you get to the bottom of the page, the characters haven't moved, but the camera's moved closer. You're right, like, in, right their in their face. And it is this... Un, un, uh, subconscious subconscious way of, of, of cranking up the tension. And whenever you read his books, literally, it, it's a tense experience. Yep. And I'm and I, I'm reading them and I'm just like, 
<laughs> you know, by the end of it, and, 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 and it's something he does that's so subtle. And yeah. It's so specific, but you'll you'll see that as a motif over and over again. And it's a cam- it's a camera, it's a move, it's it's just a, a thing. And but it's so, somehow something in the way he does it, and the, the mm-hmm. angle, and then the, the expressions and all stuff like that. And it the definitely colors yeah. and all of those things. Yeah, uh, I, I was really impressed by Welcome to Oxford. I mean, I, it wasn't a book that I would buy an issue. Mm-hmm. And then we said, okay, let's talk about Manuel. So I checked it out, and it's pretty good. I mean, I'm, and I'm, also you know, I, I think it shows um, uh, writing. He's getting better as a writer. Yeah, well, I read them back to back with Wormwood. And uh, I was so happy to read Hawksford after. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, he, okay, so there's a, either he's gotten better or it's just the, the story is what more mm-hmm, I yeah. respond to than this story. But it's, I really liked it. It's interesting to see these, you know, because I, I, you know, you think of, you know, he's known as an artist and yet, you know, he's a storyteller. So he's got stories in sure. his head as well. So it's, you know, you, you got to see that by working with somebody like Steve Niles, Warren Ellis, you know, Andy Johnson, he's going to, you know, <laughs> the, you know, he's probably got the itch to write. And it's good to see him, you know, getting, you know, having the opportunity to, you know, he's explore that. Story. The, yeah. Besides these ones yeah. with IDW, he's got yeah. several, like way more than. We yeah, have. no. If you if you like Ben Templesmith, check out IDW's back catalog. Because pretty much every <laughs> other thing is Ben Templesmith, um, yeah, but it's great. You know? He must have a darkness in him. Yeah, he, he there's something chilling in there. It's I must like, say that when I saw him, no, 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 that was not no, what I expected. No, yeah, he's a, a gentle guy. He's he's like, not, he's nice, yeah, he's very nice. He's younger than me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I didn't it, see that but it's, dark it's, in my time. It's almost like it's almost like like where does Stephen King come up with his ideas? Right. Where do, like you know um um, um what's the Hellraiser guy? Clive, Clive Barker. Barker. Clive Barker. You know, like these kind of you know cigarettes. You, know, you th- heard him talk. <laughs> Clive Barker. Yeah. He sucks like gravel being broken. But um, awesome. he's got a great voice. But it's like I'm not. I, I mean, I'm I'm not a a horror guy. Right. So like, I, I it's hard for me to put my mm-hmm. place in that headspace of where these ideas come from. But they're immensely creative, and mm-hmm. and and I can definitely respect that. Yeah, so, it's great. Yeah. And it's also it's a, it's a field that's not being filled well because the thing mm-hmm. is, there's a ton of zombie books and horror books out yeah. there. But in the th- and the thing well the thing is is that like the the market got flooded in the two thousands with vampire books mm. with zombie books. Well, um, after the thirty days of night, it just opened it, the floodgates. Yeah, yeah it was flood- and the thing is is that they're out there, but nobody does it like Templesmith. Like right. nobody and like and horror like this is truly horrifying. Like mm-hmm. his the you know, thirty days of night is horrifying. Well, horror and, needs to freak you out, yeah, right? Otherwise, yeah. it's not doing its job. Yeah. And you don't even need the words. Yeah. You just if you if you took the words out of thirty days of night. And just read the pages. In the first issue of Welcome to Hoxford, a character um, bite, takes a bite into the neck of another character. And it's, but he's like the kind, gentle. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, and then when he turns, when he flips the switch, and you see him like dive yeah. into the person, it's like, ooh, it's, you know, it's like the, uh, the art needs to have the visceral feeling of, yeah. of horror and fear, and that's he nails that. Yeah, every time. Totally. Hi, fanboy. Would like to thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode. Squarespace is a publishing system for anybody looking to build a blog, a portfolio, or any kind of website. If you're looking to build a really neat website that looks just like the high-traffic, high-budget website, Squarespace has the tools that you need to do it with no coding experience required. Be on the lookout for a couple of websites Squarespace is developing with iFanboy in the near future. If you've been thinking about starting up a website but you just didn't know how, get over to squarespace.com and try out a 14-day free trial. Use the code iFanboy when you get set up to let them know that we sent you. And make sure to check out GoDaddy.com for all of your needs on the web. They have complete web solutions including domains, hosting, site builders, and SSL. If you're setting up a place on the web, then GoDaddy is the place you need to visit. Domains starting from $199 along with an insane amount of services. With 24 hours, 7 days a week, sales and support, the web is your domain at GoDaddy.com. Use the coupon code iFanboy to get 10% off your purchase. Another current series that Ben Templeseth is working on with Ryder and... It just ended. Just... It ended a few months ago. Oh, just ended, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, uh, with writer Anthony Johnson is a book called Dead Space. <laughs> well, it's funny because last year at WonderCon we were there and they had the party for Dead Space. They had yeah. the release party or the – I guess it was the, it was the first issue release yeah, party. For, so yeah. Anthony Johnson and Ben Telsworth were there. So that's when we first heard of Dead Space. Dead Space is a comic adaptation of a video game. It's the, actually the prequel of the video game. Right. Well, yeah. it's, it's the adaptation yeah. of the world. Right. And it's interesting because whenever there's a – a mention of a licensed property book. Usually, oh, a video the, game. Usually, the, usually the reaction is, eh, yeah, exactly. It's usually not very good. Right. But the creative talent in this book is such that, well, maybe we should give it a look because we like Anthony Johnson. Temple Smith, obviously, we've we've liked for a while, so mm-hmm. give it a look. And you know what? This is actually I really enjoyed 
enjoyed the series. Yeah, and, and it's it's interesting because if you look at it, um, Warren Ellis actually was involved in the project early on. He right. did some of the concepting and some of the characters and things like that, and then he, he for whatever reason, handed the book off to Andy Johnson to write. And but So you already see that kind well, of Well, he did the video between, game concept, yeah, so the book, exactly. well, he wasn't really involved in the book. Which... Um, I believe he recommended Johnson. Right, um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah. he's not like he said, here, Johnson, take the book. Right. But um, but so you know there's, there's the, the, the connection to Temple Smith. Right. And um, for, you know, the video game's about to come. I mean, they're sponsoring they're sponsoring our show, and yep. the video game's uh, coming out around Halloween. And it's, you know, it, for fans of the video game, this is a great way to kind of, you know, expand on that universe. Yep. Um, you know, it's horror, you know. It's, well, the thing about games yeah. now is everyone wants the immersive environment, right? You right. want to get in there, you want the whole story. You don't just want to jump around Koopa Troopers, although I do. Yeah, Koopa Troopers are um, People want that whole world. Right. And you got you got things like now you have the Halo comic, which mm -hmm. never comes out. Yeah. And this one actually can't finish, yeah. but pe yeah. people want six, that. Six issues, right? right. Six people issues, People want yeah. that whole world, and this is a prequel. And you know what? You can see that there's, the reason why we always say no to licensed properties is because usually there's not really good people working on them. But mm -hmm. this is, they took a good writer and a good artist, yeah. and you got concepts by Warren Ellis. Basically what the story is, is there's a space station that's, that they're off doing their futuristic mining, whatever, the space yeah. It's like an alien. They're always yeah, doing it. It's like yeah. aliens. And then this, this, um, Totem is a marker. discovered marker. It's a big obelisk, yeah. and it has religious impact, religious implications. It, it's sort of like if we were mining somewhere and someone discovered the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And so now you've got this people on the sh on the station who are religious against people who are not religious. Unitologists yeah. is like the yeah. thing, right? and they kind of compare them to if they were uh, cultish, like a Scientology right. thing. So yeah. now you've got the religious conflict. Plus now people are going crazy. Mm -hmm. From the from the um, they can't sleep. Yeah, they're, and, they're, and then they're getting violent and they're acting they're out, killing each other. And then it goes from there. I don't want to I don't want to ruin it, but that's that's where the story goes. So you've got it's not just action. Just, there's great. Is it, I thought it was really interesting. The religious stuff was a really interesting mm -hmm. angle to put mm -hmm. to this whole thing. You've got this creeping sense of dread, and again a theme. Yeah. What's <laughs> actually interesting is this is fell aside. This is almost the most normal book that Temple Smith has done because yeah, it's not yeah. like. In the, the, in, in the beginning, it's not like you've got creatures everywhere. It's just what's, people. What's neat about this book to me was that it didn't feel like a license property. Exactly. Right. You wouldn't yeah. know. If you didn't it, know, well, That's you what I'm saying. Know. If I yeah. didn't know, and I was just reading it, I was, this is just a, a science fiction story yeah. about an otherworldly place, and I think that that's what a licensed property needs to be. Yeah. Um, so it, it's seated in, in that, Right. I suppose. Yeah. It's actually, he, the style's actually tweaked a bit. It's almost style. more detailed. This, it looks like, you know, you mentioned before in the original art, you see his, his, the drawings aren't as much as the color. Mm -hmm. It's almost like there's way more drawing on the pages of here than... Yeah, than I think well, I think it's also interesting in that uh, this is the... I mean, as far as... I, I, I believe this and Fell are the only books that he doesn't letter as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Russ Wooten's lettering this, Chris Heliopoulos' letters Fell. Um, but I, I already, just from the get-go, I could by after reading Hoxford and flipping through, you know, looking at Dead Space, you can already tell that... Yeah, you know, the books that he's drawing, he's anticipating where the where the word balloons are going right. to go and stuff like that. Whereas a letterer is working, you know, in a team. It's a different kind of feel. It's a different. Not that it's bad. It's just mm -hmm. it's a you know, it's a different kind of approach. Um, you know how I would describe the art difference between these two is the books that he's where it's more him. I mean, he he does all the art, but the books where it's more painted. Yeah. I describe it almost as a painted book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas Dead Space is almost more of a penciled book mm -hmm. and colored. Yeah. yeah. Pencils yeah. with colors, whereas opposed. That's like, just the, they have this big palette. Right. And if I look, talk about Hoxford, there is a night I think of a painted book, yeah. even though there's drawings in it. But Dead Space is almost more like okay. colors and then yeah. paint drawings and then he colors them. I mean, they're all painted, but it's just the style is tweaked. He's right. very versatile. Right. And I just you know he's. Right. And, what, and what's great is about the you know the crossover potential. I mean, the, the video game appears to be pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. It's won a bunch of awards and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And hopefully, you know, folks who play the video game want to check out the comic. They discover Ben Temple Smith, and they go to then they do, go to Thirty Days a Night, right. and they get all more people you know enjoying his work because it's definitely work that's deserved. Well, you'd hope that the, the collection becomes yeah. readily available, and then people yeah. can package that with the game, and yeah. hopefully, video game fans will. We'll buy that, and then we'll buy more it. of these. And this yeah, it all it's works good for nicely. everybody. Yay! So, um, so we're sure we forgot something about Ben Temple Smith that you probably know about because you're his biggest fan. Um, so, if you want to correct us, you can email us at uh, contact at The end is getting really bitter. <laughs> it really is. I'm sorry. <laughs> or if you want to tell us how great this was and how you love, the first love thing fell. we see after every show is here's what you did wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, email us at contact at or you can call, if you are Ben Templesmith and you would say you're completely wrong, you can call us, and that's 888-FANBOYS, which is 326 
And if you like vampires, you like Dracula, you like George Hamilton, you like Dead Space, you like Welcome to Hawksford, you like prison stories, you like gladiator movies. You can talk about all these things at ifanboy.com. There'll be a post about this show. You can talk about Ben Temple Smith's art. You can go to revision3.com slash ifanboy. You got more ifanboy videos for you every week. I'm very proud of you, Josh. For what? For not doing an Australian accent. Not once. Not once. I, think I, I did, actually. I said oh, something. Did you? Like you, you did the knife, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but I was trying to be cheesy. Right, yeah, yeah. So it was okay. Two vampires got up, right? <laughs> and they're big, fucking, vicious blokes. <laughs> they got big, drippy teeth. Let me get you one of those hats. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Bruce!